And what, what you're doing is, as an individual, you've accepted that the Enlightenment has failed, Yeah. but you're still on the Enlightenment path. You're still trying to get to the values through logic. Mm -hmm. You're going to fail. Chaos. I don't think so. You're an agent of chaos. No, no. I, uh, Why not? Um, because it, it's only something that actually threatens you. You do and threaten it, the church. You're an atheist that goes right, to right. church. <laughs> you're just shuffling from, oh, well, good is flourishing. Well, what's uh -huh. flourishing? Flourishing is good. Well, what's good? Good is flourishing. What's, what's flourishing? Flourishing is good. I'm right. not asking you to I, do I, the I, dance. I think, I think so, so everyone, say, within a particular community, society, whatever level you want to look at it, they're doing well in their lives and they lead a good life. That's, right. that's flourishing. Firstly, your, your political narrative is... I'm going to be brutal now. Mm -hmm. Forgive me. Well, I think there's good reasons for conversion, you know. I'm sure you do. Uh, I think I'm there's sure good reasons do. for conversion. Atheism ain't working. It ain't working for England. Hum Again, what is atheism? You know? it's just secular not humanism. Right, I'll leave you to secular <laughs> humanism isn't working. We need something better than all of these. So, so, I mean, so how, we how need about to stop conservatism? Being used. Cultural conservatism. It, it, what, rooted in what, though? Um, yes. Yeah, so basically, it's 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 the um, so it's the path of life, I'd say. And so you know, no, let, let all of the traditional again. values rooted in what? Uh, so Judeo-Christian. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So Ju that, that tradition. Yeah. The the the, the, the whole is, project of the Enlightenment was to try and have the keep, values keep, keep of Christianity way, without the doctrines. No, but they, they didn't have the values of Christianity. They, they tried to have the values of Christianity. Yeah. Yeah. This idea of compassion, yeah. and this idea of justice, and this idea of right and wrongs. They, they tried to use that paradigm, but they rejected all the structures that, that held it together. And now what we're seeing is all of these things are becoming undone. Yeah, yeah. And, and now the whole thread, you've pulled on the thread, and now the whole carpet is just coming away. And it's kind of like, this is what we're doing in the West. I, I, we've got the thread to the rug, and we're just pulling at the rug, and the whole <laughs> thing is just yeah. disappearing. Yeah, yeah. I think with the Enlightenment, uh, oh, thing, my there's God, a lot of yeah. a really negative <laughs> attitude towards uh, Christianity as well. Yeah. I'm just yeah. focused yeah. on, I'd say, the atrocities which have been carried out in the past in the name of Christianity or any other religion. But um, they, they didn't actually focus on any of the good things that, uh, yeah. that in, the, know, the church the Enlightenment, the Enlightenment and, is a yeah. massive... The, the Enlightenment is, is failing. Mm. Peace be with you, bro. Oh, yeah. Peace be with you. The, the Enlightenment is failing because without the Christian paradigm, without the Christian doctrine to hold it together, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they have no root for their values. So now what they're trying to do is they're trying to recast values based upon their new doctrines. Yeah. Their doctrines of humanity, their doctrines of the ego, the self. The environment. The environment, yeah. And, and so, so they're reinventing morality along those lines. Yeah. Now yeah, the, yeah. the question is, we, we can already see them cannibalizing one another. Yeah. yeah. Like, look at what's happened to J.K. Rowling. Uh -huh. You know, a feminist, she couldn't be more liberal progressive, mm -hmm. but because she believes that women are actually women, suddenly I, she's yeah. turned yeah. into what? She's yeah, turned into this. That, um, yeah, she's been uvered, um, yeah, 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 and uh, they're trying to burn her buffers. Exactly, and all that, exactly, yeah. and 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 that's the world we've walked into. Yeah. And and freedom is diminishing in the West. Yeah, freedom of speech is decreasing because without those Christian paradigms, yeah, we have yeah. nothing to nourish them or to sustain them. You know, right and wrong is is the, it's just what the Parliament says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if Parliament says it's right, it's right. If Parliament well, says I'm it's wrong, it's wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, and, and I think, I think you recognise that. I, 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 you know, I, I say these things to you. I don't feel any pushback. So that tells me you kind of already agree with all of those. Things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now let's take it a step deeper, which is assuming that that you're a man of goodwill, which it sounds like you are, and that you recognise that 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 which is good should be upheld, and that yeah. which is bad should be resisted, mm -hmm. right? How do you, how, how can we do that without embracing our Christian faith? Um, okay, so I, I, I think there's definitely a need to, like all, all of the processes, I'd say, of traditional Christianity yeah, and, and Judaism, no, I, no, I think, I'm just are making noises absolutely noise. vital. Yep. And they, they're, they're all about, you know, so say um, for, for the children that they grow yeah. up within a local community, 
that um, that actually looks after them oh, no, that, and that, looks that after the um, uh, the father and the mother as yeah. the, the husband and wife. Yeah. And that you have uh, monogamy as well. Yeah. yeah. And you have marriage yeah. between one man and one woman. Amen. And um, are you a Christian, bro? I'm, I'm not. No, no. Let me ask you this question. But I, I believe all of these processes. Really? Do you, do you believe? They do, you, all work. do you believe that no, all no, of this is good for everybody else? Got to say, there's what? Uh, everything you've just described is good for everybody else. It's it's good for everyone. So is it good for you? Yes. yes. So can you not? Can you not? Do it when Mohammed is here. When you know when there's a crowd of Muslims, that's what you want to do. Can you not embrace them for yourself then, as a Christian? There's just minimal. Um, I think not, like um, t I I go to church yeah. genuinely. Um, yeah. but, uh, like, but like basically I I mean I, I don't believe in God. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. Bit of a contradiction there. So a little bit. Um, oh and, but I I think that it's it's just the processes what that the are hell? absolutely that's vital. Like yeah. And. Um, yeah, I, I think you can't happen, get guys. rid of those processes because yeah. if you do, then yeah, the whole thing fails, yeah. and it just you, you get the atomization of everyone. Yeah. And so, I mean, I, I think that's a uh, the thing a is massive the thing is thing. it is it is precisely it is precisely no, because of our belief in God, yeah, and in the kind of the God that we believe in, mm. that these values make sense. Without, I, I think logically they work as well. That was that was the whole idea of the Enlightenment. We, we don't we can we can get to these values through rationalism. That was the whole project right. of the Enlightenment. And what what you're doing is, as an individual, you've accepted that the Enlightenment has failed. Yeah. But you're still on the Enlightenment path. You're still trying to get to the values through logic. Mm -hmm. You're gonna fail. I don't think so. Well, the Enlightenment already has failed collectively, trying to do exactly that. I, I'd say I, I'd say it, it, the reason it has is because it. Um, so the underlying ethos of that society mm. is you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Where, whereas um, the underlying ethos of a traditional society is that, um, <laughs> uh, that basically you know you need to stick to the structure. Yeah. And then the structure actually works in the benefit for the benefit of everyone. But the society that came to the conclusion you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Didn't start there. It started. Started right, with this right. idea that we believe in the family structure is important. Yeah, we believe that Christian values are good, but we don't believe in God. Right, right. And then they ended up with do whatever you want, so long as it doesn't hurt anyone else. Oh, right, right, right. That's the path you're on. You're just further back. Mm. I, I don't think it's quite like that. But, um, I mean, I you know, for instance, I I would say that. Uh, Obviously, there's a lot of uh, steps that have happened before yeah. we embrace yeah. liberal society. Yeah. 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 And, um, well, what are some of those steps? Know, baby, well, I mean, there's the TV, for instance. And, uh, yeah, yeah, that you're thinking, of, yes, technology, but that, 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 yeah. that yeah. certainly has an impact on how people live. Uh -huh. But that doesn't, that, that, that is only something that will communicate the rot if the rot is already there. Um, what, where does I'm talking about intellectually? To, to, I mean, to, to be honest, that, that was um, in, in terms of my own life. That was what was already there for the whole, yeah. pretty much the whole of it. So, yeah, uh, started off with the, I, I guess you know, with all, all the messages from the TV of the new, so yeah. Yeah. The world, yeah. and uh, how it would all just function kind of yeah. on the basis <laughs> of uh, people could just do whatever they want, and yeah. somehow this would all function. Yeah, and then. You know, a lot of what I saw from Christianity, I'd say, was quite weak-willed. Yes. For, you know, uh, when I was younger, certainly, yeah. Did you hear that, Church? What he saw from Christianity was weak-willed. So, yeah, I went to a, um, you know, a Christian school, yeah. and um, they, you know, it, it wasn't uh, an, an actual message that they were putting out of, um, of why, like, all of these structures were important that existed yeah. Yeah. within Christianity, why their, mor why their version of morality was extremely important, and but, I, I think there but, needed but the to thing be is, more of The thing is, that our morality... Our morality is based upon the idea yeah, yeah. that God exists and it, morality needs to reflect the ontology of God, okay. the nature of God. Uh -huh. So because God is just, we must be just. Because God is merciful, we must be merciful. Because God is love, we must be loved. Because God is truth, we must value truth. Yes. Yeah. Yeah? Because God is a trinity, we can have a family. Yes. Yeah. It's kind of like the, the, the idea that the idea that you can have our morality without mm. our belief in God. Mm -hmm. Like, 
you can make it work as an individual if you just have this cognitive dissonance. Right, but but right. the reality is society wasn't able to sustain that narrative. Uh-huh. Right? And, and you're making it work for you as an individual, but you're doing it through cognitive dissonance. Your, your beliefs and your values are, yeah, not, are yeah. not in line with one another. Mm. Mm. Because if you're saying that God doesn't exist, yeah, yeah. then what you're saying is that there is no cause behind this creation. Yeah. That at base, this world is just a, 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 a product okay. of a random chance, mm. Mm -hmm. and that we are just animals, with no greater purpose or calling. And so in that cosmos, you are actually free to do whatever you want. Um, I, I would say that, um, so there's the question, uh, do, you, do you want your society to have a future? So I mean, for, for me, that's, that's a pretty important question. Yep. And there's, there's the other one, which is that the recognition that the first ever human civilization uh, was a product of absolute goodness <laughs> and that uh, the continuation of human civilization is also a product of absolute goodness but as well. goodness goodness what 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 that that language of goodness yeah, yeah. makes no sense unless you believe in something called good um, so it's it's all of the processes that lead to the continuation and the flourishing of human society well, but, but, but how, that is how good. do we how do we measure flourishing so, so it's, it's working. Uh, flourishing, uh, you know, it's, Nazi it's working Germany for worked. No, it, it didn't work. Did it? It, well, it, it was I mean, destroyed. He didn't quite create the Thousand Year Reich. That uh, yeah, was it, it was it, it was destroyed by its enemies, but it worked. Um, like I mean, it. I, I wouldn't say it works. I, I'd say it was a, a massive failure. And, it, it, uh, it was. Because like it was initially destroyed, by, destroyed by enemies and then yeah. kind of imploded in violence. No, it was it, it was it was destroyed by its enemies. The thing is, just because right, something right. works, uh -huh. that it survives from one year to the next, uh -huh. doesn't mean that it's a you know doesn't mean that it's a society worth keeping alive. Right. The right. caliphates worked for fourteen hundred years. Yeah. But if well, I had the power, I would destroy every oh, caliphate everywhere right. at all times. Okay. Because caliphates are pure evil institutions. Yeah. Yeah. You and me yeah. double team, we debate. It's we'll similar with communism. Uh -huh. Communism. Well, I mean, actually, communism is an example of a, a system that genuinely doesn't work. <laughs> so you know, it, it leads to a lot it, of people it, starving. It, 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 it genuinely doesn't work. Right. But, but you're making value judgments. So you're using works. You're using ideas like good and yeah. bad, uh -huh. and you're using ideas like the family. I mean, are, I, think, I think one is like goodness is related to order, isn't it? Whereas evil is again related goodness. To chaos. According to who? Uh, so goodness is basically your guide on the path to order. But what is goodness? Whereas evil is your what, guide what, what on the path to chaos. What defines goodness? What defines goodness? Uh, so it's, it's a spirit that leads to order. A spirit, an, an attitude that leads to order. Uh, a spirit you embody that leads to the establishment of order. Of, of order and structure. But yeah. what makes order and structure good? Um, it's because it's a, a system that works and helps people flourish in their own lives. But, but there's many dictatorships that are very structured. Are they yeah. good? No. Right, why not? They're structured. Well, they, they don't you know, work for the flourishing of everyone. But, but, how, do you define, but how do you define what's flourishing? Um, so it basically is, is a system that works for the benefit of everyone who Again, exists within that system. what's defining the benefit of everyone? Um, yes, yeah, so, so ba basically the, they, you know, they lead a good life. You're just shuffling, bro. They, they lead a good life and you, they bro, you know, just, engage you, bro, in the path bro, bro, of life bro, bro, as listen, well. Listen. <laughs> you're, you're literally just using words and you're just shuffling around. You, you're not answering the question. Right. You're just shuffling from, oh, well, good is flourishing. Well, what's uh -huh. flourishing? Flourishing is good. Well, what's good? Good is flourishing. What's, what's flourishing? Flourishing is good. I'm right. not asking you to I'm, do I, the I, dance. I think, I think I'm doing more. Um, I'm, I'm asking being more you to. I'm asking you to tell me mm. how do we define what is good? What makes something good? Then you say flourishing, and then I say how do we well, define okay, what's so, flourishing? So, so and then you go, to, it's good. Right, right. So, so I've, I've 
spoken about order and I've spoken about the but we, well, hold on. We use the example individual people who live within a society. What about and a dictatorship? Tries to work dictatorship for the benefit gives of everyone. order. Yeah. So why isn't that but, good? Well, it, it doesn't work for everyone who lives within that society. Who, who, who doesn't... Hold on one second. You're so, talk, so you're going back to the flourishing question. Yeah, yeah. But you haven't defined for me how we measure what is flourishing. So, so everyone, say, within a particular community, society, whatever level you want to look at it, they're doing well in their lives and they lead a good life. That's, right. that's flourishing. Firstly, your, your political narrative is... I'm going to be brutal now, mm -hmm. forgive me, Go. but your okay. political narrative is childish. I don't think so. Let me explain why, because you're looking for utopia. I'm, I'm not. No. You, yeah, you did. You said a, a society in which every single person and every single community and every individual in that yeah. community is doing well in their own life. No, that's the ideal. Uh, exactly. Utopia. No, no, it's, it's something to and aim for. And that's childish. It's, it's, not, it's, some, it's something to aim for. So you try to ensure that's what happens. But but again, well, obviously you people but make mistakes. What, what, don't they? what defines that someone is doing well in their own life? Um, I mean, you know, you could see like whether they have uh, an enjoyable job, whether they live within a society that is peaceful. Um, so you know, wh whether they have a family, you know, that a loving family. So you all, all of so, that. But, but I'm saying that if if anything, we've got that in the West. I, I'd we say have, that's, we that's have, rapidly we have, disappearing we, we have with the peace. incursion of we, we uh, have identity we, politics. We, we've had, we've had over 70, 80 years of peace. We've I, had, I, I think it's becoming second, far less peaceful One second, now. we've had peace, we've had concord, we've got material prosperity. Everything you've defined as good, yeah. the West has in abundance. I, I think we're losing all of this now. We are losing all of this and we're yeah. losing it precisely because of your logic. I don't think so. It is because of your logic, because what you're trying to say is that, that if, if you're just trying to say that we have to achieve these things, yeah. right, for, for, to have this kind of great society, you're not anchoring the concept of human flourishing in something that is more ontological. Okay. M more about the human being. Mm. What you're anchoring in it is in the human doings. That you have children, that you have peace, that you have a job, that you have a holiday every now and then, that you have um, the ability to, to, to freely walk around. You're anchoring goodness mm. in human doings. Right. And what I'm saying is, that will never satisfy the human soul. Okay. And that's exactly why the West is failing, because uh, we've tried to anchor the good because we don't believe in God yeah. in this world. Uh -huh. We've tried to anchor the good in what material, worldly, doingly kind of things yeah, yeah. and events mm -hmm. um, define a good life. So a good life is, have you got uh, free access to uh, relatively harmless but enjoyable experiences? And right, are you right. able to own sufficient things to make your life comfortable and do you able are you able to walk freely down the street without the fear of getting mugged and yeah you know do you have a family do, am i am i touching on all the things that you define um, as good i I, th I think you know uh if you get a decent combination of that then yeah, yeah. You're, you're on the path to having a good life right yeah. but 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 the west has that and it's not working um, I don't. I, I think all of that is. I, I'd say identity politics has been the main uh, driver. Of, again, uh, again, you know, the, the system the that question, is subverting all of that and destroying all of that. The question goes deeper, and this is why mm. your this is why your kind of conservatism can't save the West. Your kind of conservatism is uh -huh. destined to fail because the questions that lie at the heart of the problems of Western society yeah. are deeper uh -huh. than questions about identity politics. Right, they come right. to the idea of what makes the human soul flourish, yeah. what makes the inner topography of the human being enlarge so much so mm -hmm. that even when he is poor, yeah. he doesn't steal. Okay. That even when he is rich, uh -huh. he doesn't forget the poor. Yeah, yeah. Even when he is single, mm -hmm. he doesn't cheat. Mm -hmm. Even on, with someone else's wife. That even when someone is alone, even when someone is alone, even when someone is alone, <laughs> yeah. and no one can see uh -huh. that they still do the good thing. Right, right. Right? That is the kind of education that we need in the West. Okay. It is the kind of education that says that you aren't defined by what you own. 
and you aren't defined by what you do yeah. you are defined by the principles and the values that you live by sure, sure. and these values have to be love uh -huh. hope and faith mm. justice prudence they have to be about chastity they have to be about forgiveness they have to be about a radical commitment to truth and yeah. to honesty uh -huh. these are the things that allow the human soul to flourish mm -hmm. these are the things because you can only have good societies when you have good people yeah yeah but we've got into the west into this trap of thinking that if you can create good structures yeah, that yeah. people pass through, orderly structures, mm -hmm. that people will be able to somehow discover themselves yeah, yeah. and in the process of that self-discovery they'll naturally become good. Right, right. And time and no, time I, again I, I, I we see that, that doesn't I think work. there's a philosophical element to it as well. Right, right? now that we've established, that, great, yeah. good, now we've taken a step forward, we've established uh -huh that our sense of good has to be rooted in something deeper yeah, yeah. than the material. Uh -huh. Brilliant. So let's ask the question again, and this time I want you to remember you said it's more philosophical. Uh -huh. How do we define what is good? Um, I, I believe it's what leads to order. So now we're back to this circle again. We've just got out of this. We've just said it's got to be something difficult. Let me, let me give you my answer and see if it'll spark yeah, some Yeah, thoughts. go for it. Yeah, yeah. How we define that which is good is by defining that which most closely represents God. Uh -huh. Because God is good. Mm -hmm. So, his ontology is good. Yeah, yeah. There is an objective idea of what is good, and that is God. Mm -hmm. And insofar as our individuality mm -hmm. and our social structures reflect that goodness, they are good. It isn't down to your opinion versus my opinion. Right, right. It isn't down to my identity versus his identity. Yeah. It yeah, is yeah. down to the fact that there is something concrete, something solid mm -hmm. to build on. Right, right. And that is how we define yeah. what is good. And we know what God looks like by looking at Jesus. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. We look at Jesus and we see God. Yeah? Yes, yeah. Now, I've given you my definition of good. Yes. God. What is God? God is truth. God is love. God is the fountain of all hope, the fountain of all mercy. He is the fountain of all truth, the fountain of all life. He is the fountain from which hope springs. He is the basis upon which salvation is wrought. He is that kind, he is all faithfulness. Okay, yeah. yeah? He is, he is the, a God of covenants, one who makes a promise and keeps it. That's what good is. Yeah, yeah. Have you got a better version? Um, I, 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 I'd say mine goes with more of the, the old uh, mythological idea of, you know, so you've got the hero's journey and he fights the dragon of chaos, he defeats the dragon of chaos, gets its gold and brings that back to the tribe. But you think that's a story, right? Uh, so that's the hero's journey. I but say. it's a story. Yeah. And so, what gives so, that story value? Uh, it's because it's the, um, basically it's the mission of uh, humanity. Is it true? Yes. Based on what? But based on every experience that uh, you know, ever since our early hominids ancestors but we, were around, but, but the thing it is, was it was their mission. But was we to go out into the world to uh, you know, uh, bro, basically bro, we can cast put, a net over the chaos. Bro, I'm sorry to bro. defeat the chaos no. and then to achieve dominion over the world. Bro, and, bro, that, and that's what we've we done. can. Bro, we can, we can, we can look to various divergent human experiences yeah, and yeah. construct a narrative along a million different lines right, right. of the common human experience. I, I, we I could, think that's, that's we the could, dominant we could, no, no, we could create a narrative based on the idea that human beings have to die. Uh -huh. We can create a narrative based on the idea that human beings have to breathe. Right, we can create a narrative based on the, the fact that we must I mean, overcome I mean, the, the, the Bible does create quite a lot of these narratives. Yeah, yeah, and they're in but, many but, other religious but, but, but what I'm and other mythological But what I'm saying is, you, well. you can't give me any good reason why I should choose your narrative. But I can okay. give you one why you should choose mine. I mean, you, you, you listed a number of attributes that uh, you can but attach to But I can God. give you a narrative, as I can give you a reason as to why you can choose mine. Right, right. Because mine's true. I, I, mine's I, a I fact. believe that uh, the story I just gave is the dominant narrative. No, no, yeah, you've said, no, you said, people. I believe it's a dominant narrative. I said, yeah. is it true? Uh, yeah, I'd say it's, uh, it's Based true. Based on what? 
uh, based on humanity's experience. But humanity has many lots of common experiences, this, this so we is, can construct this, this many the, kinds the of most, experiences. Uh, like the, the most sort of dominant narrative That's just selective throughout, filtering. throughout our past. It's just selective filtering. It's, it, it's not. If you look at um, initially, you know, we, we went out onto the savannah <laughs> as um, Australopithecines. We had to become dominant in that environment. We did so, um, you know, you had the predators attacking us. So it's a survival of the fittest the, uh, kind of... No, we, d we developed the ability to start throwing rocks at that's them. That's a survival of and the fittest so narrative. And so we became the dominant uh, species So that's a survival there. of the fittest narrative. And then narrative. We, we moved into other environments so around the world. So that's a survival of the fittest narrative. Um, not the fittest, but the, um, the, the particular conquer. species that the, the thinking ape, basically. That's so, what we so were. So how do we? How do we? How? how we, can, we were more intelligent than any other species. How can, why we? Uh, but this it. kind of narrative, this kind of narrative of power and dominance, which yeah, is the yeah. one that you're talking about, uh -huh. is exactly the one that Nazis were applying when they said the Aryan race is right. the superior race yeah. and should dominate all of the races, particularly yeah. the Slavs. Uh -huh. And if we can get rid of the Jews, we can conquer the slabs. How is your narrative any different from this? Um, okay, so you have the idea that killing other people is a bad thing. Why? Um, because... Isn't that the idea so of the someone, conqueror? Someone could quite easily turn that philosophy to you. Oh, but now you're appealing to something that isn't connected to the hero narrative. The hero right. narrative says, yeah. I bring order to uh -huh. chaos yeah. Yeah. by dominating the chaos. Yeah, but it, it, so, it wasn't by murdering everyone else in the tribe. But why not? Or murdering another band but of why uh, not? hunter gatherers. But why not? No, it, it was by achieving dominion over the world. Right, so so if I if I want to bring order to society, all I have to do is, is conquer, dominate and kill all those yeah. that bring disorder, right? Um, so it's not it's not applied to other people. Why? Inst instead, it's, it was initially applied to how we became the dominant Why? species on the planet. Because that, that's our history. No, no, you're, it, it you're, is. That, that you're just is our, you're, you know, our you're creating a mythology. Ba based on our history. Human beings have killed one another all the way through time. It is the most common human experience. Right, I mean, we, we, we did, uh, unfortunately, so what's engage wrong with, in what, what, violence wait, wait, back wait, wait, then wait, wait, against wait, each on. other. Why are you saying unfortunately? Um, because it wasn't a good idea. Why? Well, like, uh, what, early hominids killing each What's other. What's wrong with that? Uh, well, it, it, it's led bringing to, it led order to, to chaos. It led to it allows It allows the champion to arise by killing right. your enemies. It, it led to the warfare, Ubermensch, it? The Ubermensch <laughs> is brought forward. Okay. okay. In conflict and war, the superior mm. man stands tall. Right. In right. conflict and killing, the yeah. champion dominates. But, What's wrong but, with that but, narrative? But equally, do you think we should have become the, uh, the dominant species on this planet? Or what not? I'm trying to... Right, okay, so I'll stop parodying now. The, so, the, so in... So, you know, so, so in the story of the Garden of Eden, like God. No, hold on. We're not, we're, no, no, you don't Ad believe Ad in that are, You don't believe in that you know, narrative. man is the champion of you all the beasts that of the fields and all the fowl Do you believe in that narrative? Um, I, I believe that's a, yeah, a, a powerful story that uh, actually shows no, you, uh, that you, point in our development. You're shuffling. Do you believe I, in no, that no, narrative? No, no, that's the way I see it. No, like, no, so you don't, you don't believe in that narrative? Fine. I, I, okay. I, don't, I don't believe it's true in the same sense that you do. So you don't believe in that narrative? I, I believe it's true in that it shows how we developed as a bro, species. Bro, your, 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 your mythos yeah. is inconsistent. Uh -huh. Because what you're trying to say is, I, I want to see the champion, I want to see the dominance, I want to see the conquering. But I don't we, want we the need killing to that become comes the with dominant that. species on this planet. But but why can't we kill one another to do that? Uh, it's a bad idea when we turn that why philosophy is to each other. No no no. It's there's not such a bad idea when we human decide beings. that we need there's to. There's uh, of human beings. You know, take on the lions. There, there, it's not no, such no. a bad idea then. Bro bro, I wish you would address my question. Uh -huh. Why can't I kill you if you are inconvenient to me being the champion? Um, because that system leads to chaos. No, I will win, so therefore right. there will be order. It doesn't work out that way. But it does. In, in the long term, it doesn't work out Human that way. Human history is replete with examples where order has been established at the edge of the sword. Uh -huh. So what's I, wrong with killing? I, I, I don't think it works. I, I think what you see is uh, you know, the implosion of particular the, societies in violence. And, and, and the Roman Empire was one of the most violent societies in history. Yeah. And it did well for over 2,000 years. <laughs> it, it didn't do well for that long. I, I'm afraid you don't just don't know history. The Roman Empire lasted from, um, I think it was 600 years BC or 400 years BC right. through to 1453. 
Uh, yeah, but I mean, I, I'd say about 400 AD, it fell quite significantly. Only point. in the West? Yeah. In the West? It uh -huh. continued in the East? Okay. Right. So you don't know your history, bro? I mean, I, like, I, I know yeah, some yeah, of it. You don't I, I, know, I don't know all of it. My point to you is, my point to you is, you, you're, you're carrying out what's called, what C.S. Lewis described as historicism, uh, which is that you're, you're trying to say that we can establish mm. an overarching narrative of history yeah. based upon the little glimpse, the little tiny, tiny spectrum of history that we have access to. Yeah, yeah. And then from that tiny, tiny spectrum, we're able to draw out what is the grand historical narrative mm -hmm. that will guide us in how we live our life. It is right. foolhardy as Hegelianism, it's as foolhardy as Marxism. They all participated in the same nonsensical ideas. Yeah. And that's what you're doing. I you're just, so. just got a different story. Your story is rather than one of economy as Marx was, yeah. yours is more of a Nietzschean one and the idea of the emergence of the champion establishing order in the chaos. No, no I'm, I'm saying that uh, we, we needed, like in our past, to become the dominant species on this planet, otherwise we wouldn't be. We'd still be, you know, in the, the rainforest, on the savannah, and we'd still be under the thumb of the lions there. Yeah, so we, we need to become dominant. Yeah, it's a Darwinian one. It's a Darwinian narrative. Now that's, that, that's our history. Right. But but your your narrative of history, yes. firstly, is is missing huge amounts. And and ultimately, if you are consistent to the values that emerge from that story, I'm, I'm saying it's all about the processes. But basically. If, if you're consistent, I, I, I think you know it's like if, if we get back to traditionalism, it's about those processes. Decided it's about what monogamy, traditionalism? It's about marriage. No, it's wait, hold about on, hold um, on. you know the, the why, preservation why is, why of the local monogamy. You've community. got no. This is and this is my criticism of your right. argument, bro, and my criticism of your entire position. Yeah, is firstly it's based on historicism. Uh -huh. Secondly, you're, you've got massive amounts of cognitive dissonance that you just I, I can't don't, I see. don't think so. It's well, like, one second. So, so the whole no, no, ideology of traditionalism is one about second. the preservation Why, of no, the No, well, let, let, me, let me try to explain another example. Mm. Let me give, uh, give an example of the cognitive I mean, my, dissonance. My, my problem is, say, if, if no, you, you have, you haven't, if you haven't have heard Christian my criticism. You haven't heard my criticism. doesn't promote traditionalism, my, my then criticism they're is, equally likely to become a liberal. My criticism is... And they're equally likely not to continue their society. My criticism is that you're trying to say things your narrative and, and you do have liberal churches your, your narrative does not justify monogamy your narrative doesn't justify the fact that i shouldn't be able to kill you your right. narrative doesn't it, it does, just, it no does. it doesn't uh -huh. because it's, i mean it's just, it's just not one narrative I, I use more than one word yeah i, I can't just relate everything to god I, I have to be a bit more no, nuanced you're, you're, in the you're, arguments you're, I'm making. That's also that. a very simplistic view of Christianity. <laughs> but this is this is why, bro, your your yeah. your kind of conservatism mm -hmm. is a dead floating. I, I, I don't dirt. I don't think so. I, I think it's uh, there's a need to actually get you back can't get to, to monogamy that from your traditionalism. Narrative. Why? But the problem. But the problem is, like, you're. I, I'm not sure you're seeing this correctly, but. So you've got a lot of liberal churches today, yes, and you have a a lot of promotion of the idea that it's okay to be gay, it's okay to be whatever, you know, live life however you want, uh, and then you're going down exactly the same path. So I'm saying it's about the processes because I, I, this, you know I, I, you need to follow the processes. I, 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 I agree that the the way that our the way that the church community uh -huh. can can. The only way that the church community can transmit its values is if it has the kinds of institutions that permit the transmission of those values. But here, my criticism, and, and in that thing, in that point, we're both agreed. Yeah, the yeah. process of transmission is very important. How do you create a community that transmits a certain set of values? Uh -huh. But what I'm saying to you is an essential part of that process of transmission is to anchor those values mm. in a self-sustaining narrative. Right, right. And the narrative that you are trying to maintain is in total cognitive dissonance to the values yeah. you're trying to uphold. 
That's my criticism I'm, I'm, of you. I'm trying, you're right I'm in trying what you're to saying. maintain it in the logical narrative. But you're failing, you're, bro. You're putting it into the older religious narrative. Yeah, but you're failing. I, I don't think um, it's you know it's it's a failure. Because be honest. And let, let me try to. Let I, me. I, I believe the problem is that there's a lot of arrogance, or there was, in the atheist and Enlightenment movements that uh, you can just get rid of uh, all of the structure of Christianity and somehow things will work. Right, but let's, let's you look at a concrete example. The example of the family. Yeah. Right? I believe in the family, uh -huh. and the definition of the family has been a man and a woman. Yeah, yeah. Married, uh -huh. with their children, mm -hmm. and their extended bloodlines. Yeah, yeah. And I believe it because that is what is described in this book. Yeah, yeah. Now, without appealing to this book, uh -huh. just based on your narrative of the emergent champion, the Darwinian survival narrative, yeah, yeah. how can you justify uh -huh. a man and woman monogamous family as opposed to the right. fact as opposed to the fact that we can have families connected to the ideas of polygamy? Uh, so scientifically I can do this. Go on. And so it's uh, it's based on our development as early hominids. Yep. Uh, generally, we did uh, pair bond. Yep. We've always done this as a species, and uh, we've always had the children growing up under the care of the parents. And so this happens within a wider tribe of around 150 members, which is also the average size of the church community. Right, now, now let, let your, your em, what the no, church has done, what You've all religions have done, You've is they have again. emulated the conditions again. that we uh, uh, developed okay, you got it as wrong earlier again. hominids. You got it wrong again. Because if you look in history, yeah. what you realise is that the rich and the powerful always had concubines. The yeah, rich we, and the we powerful... Didn't, we didn't have money for most of our development. Right, right so my, we, we were hunter-gatherers. But my point is, from your narrative, yeah. now that most of us are rich enough, that we can maybe sustain having more than one wife, why not? Um, because I think there's a need to emulate those conditions that we flourished in as earlier hominids. And I think that's what religion has always done. But human beings flourished in environments of conflict. Right. Um, I mean, we, we, we did, but uh, yeah. I mean, so why can't we why can't we replicate those conditions? Because you just said well, yeah, we've got you, to you, replicate you try, the you conditions. You try to establish. This is you know the Jordan Peterson arguments, yeah. That you, uh, you, you basically you're trying to establish order within you know, and there's the whole world around you which is chaos. Yeah. And. Um, the, the world doesn't care about you and it doesn't care about humanity. Yeah. And so there's a need to actually uh, create a bulk against that. Do you know what Ni Jordan Peterson is doing though? He's taking the philosophy of Nietzsche yeah. and he's taking biblical archetypes uh -huh. and he's pushing them through a filter of psychology, particularly right. Jungian psychology. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's the, 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 uh, that is the exercise mm -hmm. of Jordan Peterson. Yeah. And it is something that I, am, 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 I, I have a lot of sympathy for and I have a lot of time for, mm -hmm. but, but I'm trying to point out to you uh -huh. That your narrative, the ones that here's the rubrics of the narrative I've yeah, picked up from yeah, you so far. One, we should imitate the um, conditions of early hominids because those hominids flourished. Two, that the structures are. I, I mean, obviously, we build a more elaborate system structures, than, than they do, but uh, we have to stick to those structures. Structures, structures are important to transmit values, and that. The narrative is the idea of the champion emerging, or the species emerging, from a sort of survival of the fittest to the idea of the champion establishing order over chaos. Yeah. These, are, these are the rubrics of your narrative, but this is where I'm accusing you. I, I wouldn't say it's survival of the fittest, I'd say it's uh, dominion of humanity over the planet. Which is Darwinian. So the, the but, it's, it, but it's not survival of the fittest humans, because you know, we, we are we are a small is, though, collective species, so we have always you know we're not individualists. We've always uh, functioned and flourished as a small collective. Yeah. Not so not just on our own. Here's here's, here's what I'm accusing you of. Yeah. yeah. Cognitive dissonance. I, I know. I know. Because <laughs> your you, values. You, you mentioned this your, your, your values of monogamy. <laughs> your values of of don't kill me. Uh -huh. Your values of because you know that that wouldn't be good. Uh -huh. Your values of. Um, one assumes that you believe that we should be honest. Yes. Yeah. The, none of these are rooted in the, the rubrics of your narrative. 
they are, they are Christian values that are rooted in a Christian understanding of morality and virtue. Those, I mean, those, I, I, one I, second. I think there's no, useful those, other, those, you know, there's those, other useful those, mythological those archetypes. Virtue, those, virtues, mm -hmm. those virtues, those virtues are based upon our vision of God. Without that vision of God, there's yeah. nothing to say that we should be radically committed to truth. There's nothing to say that we should be radically committed to chastity. There's nothing to say that we should even have a concept of justice, nor to define what justice is. Okay, so we get all of that so I, 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 from I think, the Bible I and our vision for me, of God. I think for me, you're like, in in a way, you, you think that you, you see God as the the divine being, and. I see the attempt to create an ordered society as the divine quest. Right, but your attempt to create an ordered society is yeah. rudderless, compassless, it's, it's not. It's not. mapless. It's, it's not. It is a ship on an ocean with no points it's, it's, of reference. It's, it's, it's not. It's the. Um, what are the points of reference? The points of reference. Um, I mean, it, it depends what the situation is, what the context is, but. That is the underlying goal. Shall, shall, is the the God. preservation of order? Shall I shall I shall I tell you what I think emerges from the rubrics of your narrative? Um, it I is mean, the yeah, idea. Uh, it, is, it is the idea right. of the champion. Uh -huh. It is the idea of the stronger man. It is the idea that power dominates and that domination creates order, and that order creates peace. D dominion over society creates order, certainly. Correct. Um, so the stronger man is the one that no, does no, that. No, the, the, the one who's able to go into the chaos of nature, uh, take We've on the dragon of chaos. We've done defeat. that. No, no, you need to do that all the time. Right. So every, every time you go out into the world, you but, need to do I that. But I see you that, as that an element ends. of chaos. That never ends. You're an element of chaos. I don't think so. You're an agent of chaos. No, no. I, uh, Why not? Um, because it, it's only something that actually threatens you. You do and threaten if, the church. You're an atheist that goes right, to right. church. <laughs> you want the church not to believe in God. Uh -huh. You're an agent of chaos. I, I don't. Uh, I don't see other people as an agent of chaos. But I see who need you. to be defeated. I, I, I see you as an agent of chaos. Right, so uh, right. from your narrative, what should I do to you? Um, from your narrative, not mine. What should I do to you from your right, narrative? But, yeah, but, because but I that, see you as an agent of chaos. That's disingenuous because no. I don't see you as an agent no, of no, chaos. No, no, no. It's not disingenuous. <laughs> no, I'm not being disingenuous. I'm being I, I, don't, I don't see you as an agent of chaos. I so. see you as an agent of chaos. According right. to your narrative, what should I do to you? Right, so that's, obviously that takes you down a dark path. What should I start. do to you according to your narrative? Oh, well, you have to defeat the, uh, the narrative or the person. Yeah. yeah. You know what Jesus said? Jesus said, mm. those that don't gather in with me scatter abroad. Right. Those that are not for me are against me. <laughs> okay. Right? Jesus is the champion. Uh -huh. He is the one that brings order to chaos. He is the one that conquers the dragon of chaos to use. I, I, I personally believe we all have to do this all the time. By imitating who? Um, by actually trying to work out what the problem is and what Ankylus we need to and do Riddle to fix. That's my point. Yeah. I said by imitating who? Now, if you had an anchor, if you had a waypoint, if you had a point of reference, you would have pointed to something on the horizon uh, and you would have gone by imitating X, Y or Z, by being like X, Y or Z. Mm -hmm. But all you did is you went back to the processes. Yeah. And that's my point. You have no anchor. You have no guiding star. No, no I, looked I, think at we, I think we do. No, I asked you. No, no, you had your chance, bro. Uh -huh. I said to you, how, yeah. how, how do we become the champion? Who do we imitate? And you referred to the processes, which means the processes are their own points of reference. Um, it's like well, looking I mean, at the, the waves the on the ocean. Is a way of, is, is a way of solving the problem. It's like looking on the waves of the ocean and going yeah. and going that way. Why? Because the waves are going that way. No, no. What, what, or because what you, the waves are coming no, what, this what, way, so what, we'll go that way. What you do way. is, say, if you're, you know, a, a ship navigator, is you generally work out where you're trying to get to, and you have your map and you have your compass, and so you rely on each of these instruments because they've been crafted yeah. and they work and you rely on the process and by doing that you're able to uh, you know that you're able to win over the chaos that is all around you and threatens it the the only way that we can win over the chaos around us is by imitating jesus that is the only way i mean like we've just got a fundamental disagreement on that point but, but this is the point you are an agent of chaos i don't think i am 
because you are someone who goes to church and you don't want the church to believe in God. Okay. Um, no, You're no, I, I mean, I'm, I'm happy for please, that to continue. What, what I think needs to happen yeah. is uh, I believe there like. needs to be a, basically like. an atheist movement that believes in traditionalism. But it's, no, it's rudderless and rootless. I don't think it is. It, it cannot sustain itself here. because the narrative, the, the, the narrative that you truth. appeal to, uh -huh. the right? The narrative that you appeal to does not sustain the values you want to sustain. I think it does. Because I, I, I think it's just a, a bunch of processes that yeah. Uh, yeah, are, lead yeah. to the preservation of the path of life. Yeah. And that morality generally is, are the processes that lead to the continuation and flourishing of the organization. Let, let's take a step back. This no, no, thank you. Bro. No, 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 we'll move for you, Uncle. God bless you. Please move. Well, let's move this way. He's he's older than us. Further, further, further back. Just go right back, bro. Right back. Okay, here, here's here's my guy. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I, I would want to leave you with this thought from Hebrews 12. Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, that's all the people that came before us. All the saints, yes, yes. all the apostles, all the prophets, all the martyrs, all the people that walked the way of Christian civilization before us. Yeah, yeah. That's who he's talking about. He's actually talking about all the people that walked the path of Jewish civilization. Sure. But we include that because we're Judeo-Christians. Yeah. Okay. Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us fixing our eyes on Jesus remember when I said who do we imitate to be this champion I was hoping that you would say Jesus but you didn't and that's why I said I accuse you of being rudderless and rootless because we fix our eyes on Jesus he is the champion to imitate he is the one that brings order to the chaos he is the guiding star fixing our eyes on Jesus the author and the perfecter of our faith all those Christian values that you so want to desperately hold on to in your traditionalism uh -huh. he's the one that perfects them all he's okay. the one that is the fountain from which they emerge who for the joy set before him endured the cross this is why he is the champion because they killed him and he still won yeah you can't get much more of a victory than that okay, sure, sure. He endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. That's what happened to the West. They took their eyes off Jesus, and then they have grown weary. They have grown tired. They have become haggard. They have become rootless. They have become hopeless. They have become inspirationless. The West and all of its calamity is because they took the eyes off Jesus. That's where we need to fix our eyes again on Jesus. I, I, I appreciate you think that. I, I think it's the preservation of order. That's the, uh, the highest ideal. Back to the dictatorship. <laughs> anyway, agent of chaos. There we are. Cheers, mate. Thank Thankfully, you. I follow a Christian narrative, right, right. which means that even though I do see you as an agent of chaos, yes, yeah. I would not seek to oppress you and to dominate you and to crush you uh -huh. to establish order. Okay, right, cool. Fair enough. Thank God you. bless you. Good to be here with you. So, the, the gentleman that we just spoke to is someone who's clearly influenced by Jordan Peterson, and he's tapped more into the Nietzschean side of what Jordan Peterson is saying rather than the biblical archetypes of, of what Jordan Peterson is talking about. Like so many uh, conservatives and traditionalists in, in Europe, we've got a situation where people can see that Western civilization is ill, that it's uninspirational, that it is hopeless, that it is haggard, that it is weak, that it is backstepping, that it is flaking around the edges, that it is cowering before its enemies, and that it is compromising to those that wish to destroy it. And it is doing that 
because it has taken its eyes off Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. You cannot sustain Christian narratives, Christian values. You can't sustain all of those traditional beliefs without the meta-narrative, without the paradigm that is the root of them, that nourishes them with the nutrients and the water that allows them to bear fruit. Without that narrative, they wither and die on the vine. And that's what we're seeing in the West. A Western civilization that without a root is dying on the vine. So I would say to all of you traditional conservatives, to all of you people that want to hold on to Christian values, you cannot do it unless you fix your eyes on Jesus, unless he is the author and the perfecter of your faith. Perfect.